Hey everybody. Today I want to talk a little bit about aquarium lighting and in particular I want to talk about the way we measure lighting and the way we label it on the packaging. I know it can be kind of confusing when you go to look at a, a fluorescent light bulb whether it's a CFL or a tube or even a LED nowadays and you'll see the there's a color temperature and there's lumens and sometimes you'll see lux and sometimes you'll see candle power or candela. Um, so I want to talk about all that sort of stuff and I don't have any real sort of laid out plan to do this and it can get kind of complicated and confusing because they all have different meanings and they all mean something and while none is the ultimate number you need to know I would have to say for planted tanks the color temperature is probably the most important and the most significant number that we're going to need to deal with so let's just set the color temperature aside for a moment and talk about lumens and the difference between lumens and lux and why as the saying goes lumens are for humans lumens aren't really good to uh, measure whether or not it's going to be a good light for your plants because plants don't see light in the same way that you and I do and the measurement for lumens is based on how we see light so lumens is basically the brightness of a light it's how much light a light source actually produces or generates and that doesn't change no matter how far away you get from the light the lights always producing the same amount of light what does change is how well you can see the light and that's basically the candle power the further away you get that light gets dimmer and dimmer even our sun if you got far enough away would would vanish and get so dim you couldn't see it anymore so that's the the candle power measurement is, is how much you can see it at a distance not a really significant number and you don't often see that one um, listed on the packaging the lux is a more important number when you're talking about plants lux is a measurement of how many photons are actually hitting the surface and i'll spare you the details of how it's measured in a square meter and so on and so forth but the lux is the measurement of how much light is actually hitting the surface of your plants and that's important the luminosity of a light bulb will not change so if it's a 4000 lumen light it's going to always be a 4000 lumen light bulb if your plant is right here next to this 4000 lumen light the lux reading on the leaves of the plant is going to be through the roof because it's so close to the light source if you move your plant way back here now the lux number is going to change significantly while the lumen of the light bulb has not it's still going to be a 4000 lumen light bulb but how many of those photons are hitting this plant changes dramatically as you move away from the light source so that's why lumens is one kind of questionable number to look at how far away is your light how tall is your tank uh, how, how much tannins are going to be in your water. There's a lot of things that separate your light source from how many photons are actually striking the surface of your leaves. So lumens is something you can use to get an idea of how much light is being produced as long as you understand what that measurement is actually measuring. It, it's going to tell you a number that's part of a piece of the puzzle. A more significant number and another reason why lumens isn't always a good thing to go by is the color temperature. Plants need certain wavelengths of light or, or colors of light if you will. That's just a simplified way of saying it. What they really need is specific wavelengths of light and our eyes perceive those wavelengths as certain colors. So technically there's no such thing as colors. There's only wavelengths of light. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just talk about them in terms of color. Um, the red end of the spectrum is going to be lower energy. In fact, if you go a little bit lower than red and you get into the infrared, it's so low it's not even enough energy for our eyes to see it. It's just what we think of as heat. But plants can, can detect infrared energy. They certainly uh, absorb and use infrared energy. And then when we go up to the other end of the spectrum, we get up into the blue end of the spectrum. That's where the more high energy 
um, wavelengths of light are, and eventually we get up and out into the purple and eventually into the ultraviolet, and you can't even see it anymore, and that's because you've gone off the top end of the spectrum. Again, plants can still see some of this ultraviolet. You can keep on going and go all the way up to gamma rays or go way down the other end of the spectrum into, you know, beyond radio waves and all that stuff. So the visible light spectrum is a really, really narrow band of the whole electromagnetic wave length spectrum. It's a big spectrum and we only see a little bit of it. So to talk about it in terms of lumens is a very, very humanistic way of looking at it. Whereas if we think about the plant's needs, most plants don't need a lot of green and yellow and orange light. They need a lot of red light and they need a lot of blue light. So when we get into talking about color temperature, that's what we're beginning to talk about. We're beginning to talk about the types of light, the quality of light, the different wavelengths of light that produce certain colors. And the reason we have to do this is because of the way fluorescence and LEDs produce light. If you're talking about an incandescent light bulb, a light bulb that's just basically a piece of metal that's heated so hot, it glows pure white. You, there, there is no color temperature because it's shining all of the color temperatures. It's pure white. When you're talking about a fluorescent or an LED, those produce light in very different ways. Now, both of them produce light very differently from each other, but the end result is that you get a very narrow band of light. You don't get this full spectrum that you should do off of that glowing piece of metal that shines all of the spectrums. You're getting uh, a phosphor, not necessarily in the case of an LED, but a lot of LEDs also use phosphors. And the way a phosphor works, or the way a fluorescent light works, is the white powder that's inside that tube is a phosphorescent. It's a, it, what it does is it absorbs a higher energy wavelength of light and then it re-emits at a lower energy. So when you turn on a fluorescent, you're sending ultraviolet radiation. The, the gases in there are glowing. They're excited by the electricity and those gases are glowing in the ultraviolet spectrum, which we can't see. Those phosphors, that white powder, absorbs that radiation and then re-emits it at a lower energy spectrum that we can see. And over the years, we've gotten better and better at producing better phosphors and blends of phosphors. And back in the day, you had either the, the warm white or the soft white, which was a very orange sort of light, or you had the bright white or cool white, uh, which was a very blue sort of light, that sort of sterile industrial sort of look. And you didn't have a lot of choice in between. Now you can buy fluorescence and all sorts of different spec, you know, you, you can look at that color temperature and that's what it's indicating. It's how far down or up on that red or blue scale you're talking. The way we derive the color temperature is by taking a theoretical object called a black body, which basically is a theoretical body that is the perfect absorber of electric, electromagnetic energy. So when you shine light on it or you heat it up or you get it warm, it begins to absorb that. And like any piece of metal will begin to glow a certain temperature when you get it up to a certain point. It, using the black body is just a little more reliable, but it's the same thing going on. When, you, when it's glowing cherry red, it's doing that because it's a certain temperature. And if it's glowing pure white, it's doing that because it's at a certain temperature. If it's glowing yellow, it's, you know, a blacksmith will tell you exactly what temperature it is by the color it's glowing. So that black body emitting the color spectrum that it's glowing from the energy it's emitting is where we get that color temperature and it's measured from degrees Kelvin. So we start at zero, absolute zero, and we go all the way up to something that's glowing 2,700 degrees Kelvin. I have no idea what that would be Celsius or Fahrenheit, but 2,700 degrees Kelvin would cause this black body to glow at that sort of soft white or that soft sort of orangey kind of color that we know of or we think of as warm white or soft white. And then if you keep heating that black body up and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, by the time we get up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin, it's glowing a bluish white color. 
and that's what we call it at 10,000 Kelvin or 10,000 K. Uh, 6,500 K is that sort of blue in the middle of the road. You get up to 14,000 Kelvin, it's actinic. It's like it makes your eyes water. It's so blue. It's what you put over a reef aquarium because they need really, really high energy amounts of light. So you use this really, really, really blue light, this really high energy light on a reef tank. And so that's where we get this color spectrum that we're talking about. So if we're going to be putting plants in a tank, we need to think about what spectrums of light do the plants need in order to grow. Not how bright does the light need to be, but what color does the light need to be. And most plants do best under 6500K color temperature. I know a lot of plants will, will utilize a lot of reds, but even the plants that use reds also need blue. And that's where you start getting into the, the problems with the fluorescence and the LEDs. You kind of sacrifice one for the other. If you want a lot of blue in your light, you're not going to get a lot of red and vice versa. So if you want a tank that's got that nice, soft, warm lighting to it and you put the soft white, these 2700K or these 3000K bulbs in there, you're not going to, your plants probably aren't going to do well because they need blue light. They need the higher energy wavelength of light. And you're just not going to get that with this low color temperature lighting. Even if you put a really bright 2700K light in there, you're going to increase the lumens, but you're not changing the color temperature. And it's the, the, the wavelengths of light aren't going to change. You're going to be making them brighter and more intense, but there's still going to be 2700K brightness so that's where you're you're running into problems that's where the difference between lumens and color temperature the color temperature is more important now when you get into like a low light plant that's not saying it needs a softer color temperature it just needs less lumens so you're still going to want to use a 6500k tube but instead of using, say, a 100-watt tube, you use a 50-watt tube or a 40-watt tube. And again, I'm just pulling these numbers out of the air as an example. So the color temperature is not what changes. It's just the intensity of the light. So that would reduce the lumens, but it wouldn't reduce the color temperature. So I know, again, that this all gets very confusing. So just remember that it's the color temperature that is the important part. The wavelengths and the spectrum of light that are shining on your plant is what the plant uh, needs. Think of it as the food for the plant. If you were given food that you couldn't eat, it wouldn't matter if you were given it by the truckload, you'd still starve to death. So if you're giving your plants light that they can't use, if you shined green lights on your plants, it wouldn't, it would just never matter. Your plants would just die because they're not using that green light. So you've got to get the color temperature correct first. And once you're shining the right kind of light on the plant, then you need to determine how much of that light. And that's where the lumens would come in. So if you've got a low light plant, like behind me, these are uh, Java Fern, and they can deal with fairly low light, but they can also deal with a fair amount of light too. As you can see, I've got a fairly brightly lit tank behind me. There's a lot of lumens in there, but it's all 6,500K. So they're getting the right kind of light, and then they're just getting lots of it. So again, lux is probably not something you're going to need to worry about, but lux is basically the measurement of how much light is striking the leaves of your plants. So it is important, but you're probably not even going to see it on boxes of, of light bulbs. It just, it's not a big number. Uh, that, that's really you know utilized in the industry. The lumens is what you're going to see and that's going to just indicate how bright the light is going to be. The color temperature is what you really need to look at and we can talk in another video about color temperature and why uh, you know certain plants like of this color temperature versus that color temperature but rule of thumb the general best color temperature that you're going to have for your plant is between I like between 6500k and 10,000k but 10,000k is getting a little high um, 6500k is probably ideal if you can't find 6500k and you got to go lower than that I wouldn't go any lower than 5500k once you start getting down into 5,000 4,000k I know it looks nice again plants don't see the light 
in the same way you and I do. So while the 5,000K or the 4,000K might look nice to the plants, I mean, you know, to you, it might look nice on the plants and make your tank look pretty. Your, your plants may not be getting all of the light that they need. So the, the 6500K is probably going to be your best bet to go with as far as color temperature. And then you can scale how much wattage, you know, how bright the light and the luminosity is going to be based on how many watts the light is. The higher the wattage, the brighter the light's going to be. And that's going to be your lumens number. So a low light plant needs a lower wattage but it needs the same proper color temperature. So I hope that didn't make anything any more confusing and maybe cleared some things up. So if you got any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you ring the bell because you never know when I'm gonna do a live feed and you don't wanna miss it. And if you've got the notification on, uh, you'll be notified as soon as I go live. So you won't miss any of that. So thanks again for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed, hope it was helpful. And I'll see you real soon in the next one.